So Say Jam made a controversial statement. I think fighting games are about as hard as learning any other game, if you want to really learn them. And I refuse to say otherwise. And a lot of people disagreed with him, myself included. Man, w when I heard him on that first video, and then on that second video, and then on the follow-up stream, I was I was steamed, man. I was pissed. I was like, how how dare you say jam? How how dare you be so wrong? So I did what any sane, well-adjusted human would do. I, I wrote an eight-page script detailing arguments for why he was wrong. You know, like you do. And man, it was gonna be sick. I was gonna hit him with facts like, according to this data, in League you have about eight fundamental combat abilities, and all of them are one to two button presses without any timing required. In Overwatch, it's about the same, but in Fighters, I have 20 plus combat abilities, and specials and supers are locked behind four to seven button input combinations with a timing requirement. That's illegal. 20 is greater than eight, four and seven are greater than two. Boom! I rest my case. Fighting games are harder. It's time to pay for your crimes. Take that. But then I thought about it. Wait. And I thought about it. Could it be? Is this? And I had to think all the way back to the early 2000s, Soul almost Calibur 20 years ago, two. when I would play fighting games like Soul Calibur 1 and 2 and DOA 2 with friends. We were absolutely terrible at those games, but man, did we have fun. None of us knew how to do all the moves our characters had. Most of us knew like three moves we liked. And anytime we did something sick, we would spend the rest of the match just trying to figure out how to do it again. And it was considered shameful to ask to pause and look at the move list. Shameful! How dare you! How dare you try to get a leg up on me and actually learn how to play your character? Disrespectful! The only inputs I knew were the B button was block and everything else was attack. And button combinations sometimes did things. I didn't show the block button much love, but I would honestly play thinking, huh, I haven't been pressing Y much this match, maybe I should use it now. So if we were having fun just wailing on buttons almost 20 years ago, having no idea how to do most of the moves, why do I think they're fundamental now? I think it has something to do with the expectations that have been set by the last 20 years of game design. In the vast majority of games, you learn a basic set of controls for your character, and the game expects you to be able to use those abilities from the start. These are the base abilities of the character. This is true for board games as it is for most single and multiplayer games. Many games will limit the number of abilities you have initially and make you unlock them as you progress. This ability gating helps ensure the player is always only learning a small number of new mechanics, ideally one. Did you just get a new item or ability in a Zelda or Metroidvania game? Get ready to use it a lot! Fighting games don't have that structure in place. It's on the player to determine what the important abilities are. And when you are losing to combos, special moves, and supers, it is easy to assume that those are the important moves and those are the tools that are beating you. In a shooter, if someone keeps killing you with a sniper rifle, you assume the gun or tool being used is good and the reason you are losing, when in fact it may be that you should be taking a different approach path, or smoking sight lines out, or any number of other tactical options, but the default human assumption is, oh, that gun, tool, or ability must be strong. I need to buy it, earn it, pick it up, whatever. It isn't unreasonable for a player to think this way, even if they are wrong. You can think of playing a game in terms of levels of thought. At the lowest level, you have the basic thought and execution behind entering inputs to be converted into actions in the game. And above that, you have the level that most people consider to be playing the game. The higher level strategic thinking and problem solving to win. People are accustomed to learning a base set of controls for their character and mastering those easily. In most modern games, these base controls include things like special moves, special abilities, ultimates, and powerful tools outside of basic attacks and movement. This isn't the case for most fighting games. Someone coming from League or Overwatch has an expectation that doing a super should be a simple one-button input, or at that level of execution, and the difficult part should be using it at the appropriate time. In most fighters, that simply isn't the case. 
I'm not here to say whether that is good or bad design, but that is the way it is designed, and it is unintuitive to a new player that they should start playing the game without having the execution ability to do their most powerful move. Game mechanics and abilities are designed to give you a set of tools to accomplish your goal, and often they will give you multiple tools that can all solve the same problem. Some of the tools have low execution and others have high execution. It is okay for higher level tools and abilities to be out of a beginner's reach, provided there are obvious tools that still provide the same utility at some cost, or provided the higher level tools are not required to win. In most games, it is apparent to the player that the high execution option isn't required for basic play. One of the reasons fighters have massive move lists is to provide these high and low execution tools. This is really hard for a new player to wrap their head around. The games don't really tell you which moves are important, and the mental model many gamers have for learning games is first learn to do all the basic things, usually no more than eight things after movement, and then start playing. So when a player with that mindset looks at a move list, for a fighting game, they assume they need to be able to do everything on the move list in order to play the game. It is easy to assume each move has its own unique utility and function, and that not knowing all of them will make you unable to play. The one thing I really believe fighting games lack compared to other competitive video games is fun modes. People complain about not having enough single player content, and I think that is valid. But League has Earth and ARAM, Overwatch has Total Mayhem and Arcade modes, as well as many other custom game modes. Counter-Strike has Gun Game and countless other custom game modes. These other games have managed to keep their core movement and combat mechanics while adding fun, silly, non-competitive modes that allow beginners to have fun and even win without needing massive execution skill. I don't think fighting games are inherently harder to get into than other competitive games. I believe the issue is there is an expectation from new players that specials and ultimates are part of the base ability kit, and therefore they feel like they are not playing with access to all the required tools necessary to be able to begin thinking about the game on a higher strategic level. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate it a lot. If you have thoughts or feelings on this topic, please post them in the comments below. Uh, a little bit more about me, I'm a game developer and designer. I used to be a software engineer, I've worked at NVIDIA and at Google. I quit to chase the dream of independent game development. I stream on Twitch, you can find me at Erebus Wolf. all my social media is Erebus Wolf. My Twitch streams are primarily either game development or me just playing games. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you around.